The first thing you need to know is that Palermo's airport isn't actually near the centre of Palermo itself. It's near Carini, which is just outside of Palermo. So a lot of people will take a transfer, often a taxi, to arrive in the main centre itself. But there is also a coach transfer that you can take, which runs pretty much every day and will take you into various points within the main centre of Palermo. I'll pop a link below into the show notes so you can check out the timetable for yourself. But it's a really good option instead of paying for a taxi. There are plenty of accommodation options in Palermo, ranging from hotels to bed and breakfasts to hostels and even to Airbnbs. But one thing you need to pay attention to is the location of your accommodation. If you choose to stay in or around the historical centre, please be aware that at night it's a very loud and lively place, especially in the summer months. So if you would prefer to be in a more tranquil setting, then I recommend that you look outside of the main historical centre itself. Another thing to pay attention to is where you choose to eat and drink. Via Macreda is a very popular tourist hotspot and it is the road that leads up to Quattro County. Here you will find lots of different bars and restaurants and whilst I'm not disputing the quality of some of them because you can find some really good places to eat along there, the main purpose of a lot of these businesses is to cater towards tourists and so you kind of come to expect that maybe you're going to pay more for things at these places than you would if you were to venture off the beaten track a little bit. Taking a classic example of Sicilian street food, Arancina, at one of these restaurants along the Via Maqueda, you can expect to pay around €3.50 for an Arancina. But if you were to go to Capo Mercato or off the beaten track a little, you can pay anywhere from €1.80 to €2 Euros for exactly the same food. So just something to be aware of. They are not necessarily the most authentic places. A lot of the businesses are on there. So just pay attention to where you choose to eat and drink. There is a sightseeing bus in Palermo, which takes you around to all of the popular destinations. It's a hop on hop off service, and it's a fantastic way to see the city without experiencing it on foot. One thing I will say though, is that if you plan to stay mainly around the historical center, you can easily access a lot of the touristical places on foot without the need for the bus. So the bus is good if you want to go further out of Palermo and to see some of the other places like Mondello, for example. But if you plan to stay in and around the historical center, you can have an incredible experience purely through walking. If you are in Palermo on the first Sunday of the month, then you are in for a treat. A lot of places, museums, galleries, villas, offer free entry on the first Sunday of the month as part of a government initiative across Italy. So if you happen to be in Italy on the first Sunday of the month, I recommend you take advantage of this. I'll put a link below to the show notes so you can see what places in and around Palermo are part of this initiative. But it's a great way to explore the cultural beauty of Italy without paying a penny or a euro, should I say. Although you'll find a lot of restaurants open all day, especially along Via Maqueda, Corso Vittorio Emanuele, all the popular tourist hotspots, the majority of restaurants outside of lunch service will open typically around 7 p.m. for evening dinner. Italians eat later here. It's not normal for an Italian to be eating dinner around six or seven o'clock. So if you do go into a restaurant at this time and you find it empty, this is why. A lot of Italians will go for dinner around 8.30, 9 o'clock and often later. So if you want to have a real authentic Italian experience, that is the kind of time that you can expect to want to eat your dinner. If you fancy taking part in some free street entertainment, Quattro County is a fantastic place to discover up and coming street performers and artists. You will often find buskers and performers here pretty much every evening and it's a great way to sample the atmosphere in arguably one of the most beautiful locations. An absolute must in Palermo is to get a rooftop view of this beautiful city. A lot of tourists will head to the cathedral in Palermo for this experience. And whilst it's absolutely beautiful, it does cost you seven euros and often gets extremely busy. A more inexpensive and less well-known option is to head to Chiesa San Salvatore, which is on Corso Vittorio Emanuele, which is essentially the same road that the cathedral is on. And you can visit the dome and get an incredible view of the city at a fraction of the price for just three euros. So I would suggest that this is a better option in order to see the incredible rooftop view of Palermo. 
The train station in Palermo is really well connected and from there you get to explore other parts of Sicily, including Cefalu. Cefalu is an incredible seaside destination which gets extremely busy in the summer but is easily accessible by train from Palermo train station. So it's something that I would recommend that you do and not travel by car because parking and traffic is just a nightmare, particularly in the busy periods. One thing to note though, the area around the train station isn't the best. So pay attention to your personal belongings and just have street awareness when you are in and around that part of the train station and that area around Via Roma as well. Don't even think about going to McDonald's if you are here in Palermo. Yes, they exist here, but honestly, you are doing yourself an injustice. The street food here in Palermo is incredible and really inexpensive as well. From Panella e Croquet to Arancina in Palermo to the various other types of street food that you can have. Milza, if you fancy eating something very typical, although it is the inside of a cow, um, and to many other dishes that you can find. It is the best way to experience Palermo is to try the food here. So please don't ruin it by going to a typical fast food chain restaurant. Mondello is the well-known city beach here in Palermo, but it gets extremely busy, especially in the summer months, when the majority of the beach is taken up by Lido's, leaving a very small stretch available for public use. If you want to get a space on the very small stretch of beach, then I recommend that you get up at the crack of dawn. So the best time really, if you want my honest opinion, is to visit Mondello before June, because that way the Lidl's are not taking up the space on the beach and the beach is clean and beautiful and at its best when it's not heaving with tourists. If you fancy going somewhere a less busy, there are other beaches and places that you can go to, but essentially they're not easy to reach with public transport alone. So you will need to consider hiring a moped or a car if you want to explore something outside of the main center itself. Visit to Palermo is not complete without visiting one of its famous street food markets. My personal favorite is Capo Mercato. It's a great destination, fantastic vibe, fantastic atmosphere, lots of different places selling traditional street food as well as fresh fruit, vegetables, fish, anything you can think of. It is amazing and is my personal favorite. So I highly recommend a trip there. I hope this video has helped. If you want to get some more tips and tricks on how to be a tourist in Italy and get the most out of your holiday, I highly recommend this video here and I'll see you next time.